Hey guys, Omni here. Welcome back for episode 5 of season 1 of The Bear. We're going to go ahead and hop into the skies. If you want to see the full entry reaction, you check it out over on Patreon or if you've got a member of the channel, it gets you access as well. It is a watch along format, so you will need your own footage to sync up the time codes to react to the entire episode. Over there, you get the same thing for all the other shows and movies that we cover on the channel. You also get to suggest and vote on movies to react each month. We got monthly QAs, behind the scenes footage to try to make it worth your while since you are going out of your way to support the channel. But guys, at the end of the day, I really appreciate it. Enjoy this reaction. To least, if you like, Drop a comment, subscribe if you're not already. With that, I'll send it all the way. Let's hop into episode five, Sheridan. Here we go. Those are cute little lights. Speed. Nice. Sheridan Road Catering. Baby. Sorry, Dad. Mm. I like how much like Carmi too, and again, it could mean a completely different thing, but I'm relating it to the way we saw Carmi's flashes back to New York or whatever, his schooling. I don't know, the way it's edited and all this stuff, it's like they have this like PTSD of how they got here. Like the, the training, the effort and all this stuff, or she's just, you know, wakes up super hungry <laughs> and can't stop thinking of uh, all these delicious ideas and meals that she could cook up. But with how the show uh, has been so far, I would probably go with the former. For the new menu, mm -hmm. just thinking maybe a play on tongue and cheek. Ox tongue? Or braised beef, maybe short rib and risotto. Oh, maybe. Man, this book is wild. Yo, Shake it up a little bit. Uh, nah, uh, chefs, we got any non iodized salt? Yeah, in the walk in. How are we doing on cake? About to fire them up. Well, he said, uh, did you just get here? And he said, no. So how long has he has he been here before everybody else? Sorry, just uh, scissors. One side looks like shit. Both sides look like shit in here. Yes, chef. What the fuck was that? What the fuck was that? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Oh, no. Um... Oh, no, I know what this is. Oh! Fuck! This is fucked. We need to close for lunch. No, 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 no. We lose one service, it could kill us. You don't think this is putting at a risk for losing a service? No. No, this is fine. Yo! Fact, yeah, we need you here ASAP, bro. The toilet is fucked. Yo! What is good, you fucking replicants? <laughs> Does somebody just watch Blade Runner? Which I still need to do. Manny Angel, cousin, just lock this shit down. <laughs> Mrs. Always Right on Tina's. Uh, apron. Okay, so, seed those shallots, the garlic starting to caramelize, a little bit of capers, a little bit of white wine, let that reduce, and then you've got some hot stock. Let that deglaze the bottom of the pan. We're going to uh, whisk in about two tablespoons of butter, and do a little bit of pepper, salt, squeeze of lemon, parsley. Dude, like, how do people come up with these combinations, man? Like, I'm, <laughs> like, I... It's insane to me. Good. Mm. Good. Yes, Jeff. Mm. It smells so good in here. Fack attack! <laughs> Fack attack! And this one time. At big camp? I saw a dragon. Just pay attention. Don't strip the thread. I'm not stripping the thread. Uh, uh, stop trying to fuck me. I'm not trying to fuck you, bro. Dude, it's a human resources offense, dude. Oh, yeah. Guess what? You're looking at human resources. Really? Oof. Yeah. Carmi says he's down a couple cooks. Do you think that I can apply for that job application? Hmm. I don't know, bud. There are two ways to go about lacto fermentation. Yo, we need to go to Copenhagen and fuck that place. What are the two up. ways? Dude, okay. Uh, like, you can stay on target. Stay on task. Either vacuum sealed plastic bag or. Uh, yo, Carmen. Yo. Uh, can I borrow a sous vide bag, chef? You know how to seal it? No, chef. We can learn. Uh, okay, above the locker. Thanks, Chef Carmi. <laughs> Welcome, Chef Dur. Yo, what time are you home tonight? Should I save Bachelorette? I'm gonna be late. Just watch without me. 
But hey, don't ruin that shit again. I didn't ruin shit. You asked me what happened. Yeah, and you told me every detail of the whole episode. I mean, <laughs> don't ask what happened if you don't want to know what happened. Two hours service, chef. Yes, chef. Yes, hey, how we looking up front? Shitty but better, chef. I'll take that. <laughs> yes, <look at> <laughs> Uh, we want to take that a little bit darker. You see that brown spot right there? We want to see that everywhere on the bottom. That way, when the stock hits, you're going to scrape up all that. That's going to get that flavor. When Mike, you make that for you? Christmas. My mom, is she full psycho? She wasn't calm, but the food was great. All right, looks good. Two more minutes at that stock. Okay, Chef? All right, got it, Thank Chef. You. I like that every, everything, like, after that little hump we cleared with Tina last episode, things are running a little more smoothly this time around, this episode. You're going to need brain. Now, do you have any special skills or abilities aside from being a fucking stroke? Well, A, I'm not a fucking stroke. And B, what does that even mean? Keyboard. No, A, you are. And B, no, you're not. Well, A, yes, I am. And B, I joined a jazz fusion class, so in your face. A, I've heard you fucking play, and you're fucking terrible. And C, it's a fucking restaurant. Why do I give a fuck that you play the keyboard? I'm a hard worker. I'm a nice guy. I got a great vibe. Fuck your vibe. Don't ever fuck my vibe. I swear to God, I will fuck anything I want to fuck. I mean, I'm all for giving people a chance where they are warranted. Oh! I don't know that this is one of those situations, if you've... Especially considering how desperate they are to turn this thing around. Wow, this escalated. Spray him! Get a water bottle. Spray him. Oh, that... I guess that works. He is I'm fucking not nice. I don't he like is place a fucking place. asshole. Rich baby has no problem. I wasn't even going to say this. He is selling fucking coke oh. in the back alley of the beef. Hey, 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 oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, are you happy now that you told mom you yeah. fucking stroke? Mommy knows now. I see you. I fucking see you, Neil Jeff. Um, that's not okay on many levels. <laughs> Oh, he's rushing it. Oh, no. It's busted again. Oh, oh, is it just going faster and faster now? I distribute just little bits here and there when I'm holding, you know. Out of my restaurant. Out of the alley behind your brother's restaurant. To it's help his it. restaurant. <laughs> God damn it. Wasn't my idea, by the way. Oh. Whose idea was it? <laughs> Come on. Mm. I think you can guess, cuz. How the fuck? Do you think we made it through COVID, huh? And that's the kind of stick to itiveness and ingenuity and out of the box thinking that we look for in employees. That's insane. We're done with this fucking bullshit, okay? We're done with your stupid friends. We're done with Nico. Nico's got nothing to do with this, Dad. Hey, I else. swear to God. All right, relax. Swear to God. Don't blow a fuse, all right? Oh, 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 no. <laughs> fucking it. Tell him not to blow a fuse, and then the entire place blows a fuse. Kitchen. Out. Up front. Off. Walk in. <laughs> Off. That's everybody. Oh, no. The food. Oh, I didn't even think about that. A couple racks to fix, but I got a connect on a condenser guy. What's good news? The connect. You know, actually, change of plans. We're gonna take everything. Just take it outside. Yeah. Can I ask you a favor? God, I was working from home today, huh? Dude, you're a lifesaver. Oh man. wow, let's go. Uh, thanks, cousin. I ain't your cousin. Very well. Mm. It's not my cousin either. Uh, hey, everyone. Dum, dum, dum. <laughs> nice to see you guys. What's going on? Nothing. Hey, it's all right. We asked Pete's permission here, right, Pete? Oh. Oh, you asked Pete. I said it'd be cool if they uh, were to use the. Oh, okay. Well, you said it would be cool. And let her talk to you like that? Go fuck yourself, Richard. Yeah, I will. Hey, can we do this later? I kind of got a lot going on. Yeah, I also have a lot going on. Did you know I recently had a brother die too? Oh, goddamn. That's something I keep forgetting too, like just how recent this passing was and that literally everybody is dealing with in their own ways, like especially the people in the kitchen. I bet you can't name the first baseman. Alfonso Rivas? Hey, man, straight up, that was fucking gnarly. You're such a soft, nice. shitty bitch. 
What? You call Pete because you're too scared to call me? That's weak, bro. No, no, no. I call Pete because every time I call you, you talk a bunch of shit and I can't really get into a fight right now. You only call me when you're freaking out. And since I know you're low on time, here are the bullet points. You mm. only appear when you need something. You never got back to me about the thing. You've spent every minute since you've been back in that fucking restaurant, and now you're taking advantage of Pete? Oh, and you know how much I hate Richie being here. I'm fine with all that, except wow. I do kind of like Pete now, and yeah, you have I... such a fucking attitude. I went to the thing. You went to a meeting? Yeah, I go three times a week. Oh. Where? River North. All family? All family, yeah. No. <laughs> turn, <laughs> turn that conversation around real quick. Yeah. Hmm. You got one hour to service, Chef. Chef, there's a light out front. And you guys uh, clarified why they have such an issue with Pete, and it it makes it makes sense. It's dumb. It's a little irrational, but I I get it all at the same time, and I see that and hear that a lot. I just didn't know the case here because it seemed like there was like a history, but I guess it, it's just as simple as they don't know how to compute or welcome somebody like him into their sphere. Neil. Uh oh. What now? Gas line down. Ugh. Oh my God, oh, that too. We can't open. Gary, it's getting greasy in Are here. Are they still building across the street? Very dangerous. What are you gonna do? Oh, we're gonna make it. We're gonna just make a manual ass grill. Let's go. Hell yeah. What in the world? I mean, again, just coming back to what I said earlier, is this just like certain things triggering her from her past? Or is that like memories? I mean, obviously it's memories coming back, but like maybe it's like, aha, memories versus ah, memories. I don't know. But that's some quick thinking. And it's honestly like it creates a whole other vibe. Sweet, thank you. Yes, we do. I don't know, I would like, assuming like, I mean, it's probably pretty cold out right now, but like, I mean, quite clearly based on everybody dressed, how everybody's dressing right now, but like, Fire. it's, I don't know, it's a nice little vibe. Probably be better during summer, but still. All right, fucked up. No, he's gonna beat himself up over cakes. it. I tried to speed it up and I blew the fuse. This job's insane. You know, it can go from chill to unchill in a second, but you gotta stay ahead on your work. That's just that. Well, my first job was McDonald's. You don't get to be creative. You just work with robots and everything's automatic and fast and easy. Or we'll make a mistake again. Yeah, you will. But not because you're you, just because shit happens. No. I started a fryer fire. Night after I won Food and Wine's Best New Chef, nearly burned the place down. For real? For real. <laughs> this weird thing happens you're watching the fire and you're thinking if i don't do anything this place will burn down and all my anxiety will go away with it wow yeah and then you put the fire ain't out. that the truth then you put the fire out so what's up you want to be a baby for another minute or you trying to party oh <laughs> 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 uh. hey kudos to the chef no $5,500? Yeah, I'm sorry, but yes, dude, yeah. Bro. Bro. <sighs> you said you had a connect. Wow. Yeah, I definitely, definitely did not, don't, don't have a connect. You did say you have a connect. I'm gonna get $5,500 that fast. But having the connect doesn't guarantee a good price. That just means you can get the thing. It's pretty interesting you guys coming to me now. <laughs> I need you to sell some uh, Coca-Cola. Emphasis on the time, the first word again. there. I want it far away. I don't want to know the details. We okay. Need this. <laughs> the fridge won't work without a condenser. Say Matei. Richie. No. Say Matei, Neil. You didn't even win. This is me winning. Say Matei. Say it, Fay. Come on. I'm Say confused. Mate, what does this even mean? Fuck it. Matei. 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 Your wish is my command, Neil. Cousin, this is the last time, right? Yeah. Sure. Richard. <sighs> well, he used his Carmen. legal name. <laughs> I understand. Oh. Yo. Fuck! 
<laughs> oh. Dude, I was at the movies uh, this week to see Bad Boys Ride or Die. And like in the lead in to the trailers, actually during the actual trailer trailers, they started to play a, tr a, a, tr a well, I would call it a trailer because it was barely anything. But like it was uh, like this 30 second spot for the third season of this. And I just had to like close my eyes and just like hum to myself in my little corner. It's a lot of things. Got too big, too fast. Didn't expect to like potentially be spoiled. It wasn't exactly at a theater. enough for a brick and mortar. And so running it out of my garage was stupid. My credit got destroyed. I mean, my whole shit got rocked. Oh, there's not a night that's what that was. Thinking about what I could have done different. Oh, like, it was the first time I didn't have a complete and utter psychopath behind me screaming and pushing and yelling. I thought I, I wanted that, you know, the quiet, but look where that got me. So heard chef. Can you can you help me strain the stuff? Yeah, of course. Yes, chef. Mm. This is what love is for. There's some kind of comfort and push. The anxiety kind of gives you, it seems like, that they both kind of relate to. Being on her own, doing her own thing, and then not having that voice you where she thought that would be a comfort. Like It's almost like she was conditioned to need it. And Carmi, you know, he's talking like when he's talking to Marcus. When that fire happened, I could have easily, if I just let it burn, uh, all my anxiety would float away in the flames. But... He put it out because that anxiety he, he needs. He's just got to, that's life, got to roll with it. At least that's how I interpreted it. I could have misunderstood the conversation, but I don't know. It's a nice little glimpse. I like that we're opening up the characters a little bit more slowly, very gradually. Also, I just watched Bottoms, and she was one of the leads in that, and she's, like, she's hilarious here, man, but good God, she's so fucking funny in that movie. I should have my reaction out to it uh, in the next couple of days sometime soon. Not exactly sure exactly when, uh, but it'll be out, I'd say, within a week of recording this or posting this. Damn. I don't know. I, uh, that might be one of my favorite episodes so far. I mean, they're all super good, but like, I don't know. I like the on the fly having to figure out how to so solve this. And we didn't, outside of, you know, Ricky and uh, Fack getting into a fight in this, um, for the most part, it was just the team coming together to solve a problem. While Marcus was a little behind on getting everything done before everything opened, you know, it did, I, I was like watching him go through the process. I was like, oh God, he's just trying to rush through this stuff. Like the rate at which he was throwing stuff into the pot to whisk it all together, to mix it before dumping it into our little like mixer. And then to turn that up and it just starts going way too fast and then blows the fuse and takes out the entire place on top of that the plumbing explodes it was just a crappy day just right off the jump and like they said you know with how desperately financially destroyed this place is at the moment they can't afford a down day got to pay everybody they got to keep the business going they got to pay their bills and get like keep this place floating because it's barely scratching by at the moment so like they had to figure out what to do next you know they tried to find a roundabout way to get you know, through fax connections to get the parts they need to get everything back and running. Meanwhile, they got to figure out what to do with the food. It calls up Pete. And I like that he's starting to like mend this connection or at least like bridge that connection a little bit. You know, started off with him calling the first time, even though it was an avoidance tactic to avoid talking to Sugar. He reached out to Pete, apologized to him for probably some shitty thing that happened in the past that we haven't really touched upon yet. 
and then even after the drive home in the previous episode and then reaching out now and it's like hey we're, we're kind of cool you know and it's like i don't have time for you to kind of come down on me about all this stuff and then she hits him with the i'm grieving too like you're not the only one that lost a brother here in this situation it's just like goes to show that like this this restaurant in a lot of ways and just his approach to wrestling with this this trauma and these difficulties has caused him to kind of deflect a little bit. He's putting all of that into the restaurant. However, he did take her advice and he is going to these Al-Anon meetings, which warmed her heart right out of that fire that she was in there when she was just frustrated with the way that she's he's been uh, just kind of dodging everything and dancing around and talking to Pete instead of her, you know, not asking her about how she's doing. He's avoiding certain things, but he's he's trying. He's trying to do better and he's taking her advice. He's taking some steps to to do that. So like there there's gr gradual growth already happening and I love seeing all of that. You know, they brought the meat here to store it in their freezer to keep that from all spoiling. Meanwhile, they had to figure out how to open because even the gas went out after all of that. So what did they do? They used the open construction site across the way, grab a couple of cinder blocks and make a makeshift grill, throw down some coal and get it burning and just start serving people outside. And hell, it was like, we got a couple of kudos to the chefs, you know, from the people that were coming out there and buying some of their dogs. Editing Omni here, real quick, I wanted to chime in on this because it didn't occur to me during the reaction about this connection, but remember that conversation that Sugar had with Carmi about why he put up with all that bitching and moaning and complaining that abuse up in New York, like she was talking about how they would, you know, he would talk about and complain about everything. And this is like, why'd you keep doing it? You know, he liked when people liked the food. He liked hearing the people's satisfaction with his work. That kept him going. That made all of the abuse worth it you know and then in this episode we have sydney opening up about her experiences which sounds very similar to what carmy was going through and she thought once she got away from that once she got out of school that maybe the next step would be to form her own business she starts this catering service and then it's like maybe it'll be nice not having some asshole screaming in my ear 24 7 just to kind of get rid of that stress but then there's the stress of keeping that business going and then the way that that eventually ruined her credit. And we saw flickers of that in the images earlier in the episode as well. She just ends up right back in a kitchen, very much the same environment. What happened in this episode? Out in the field, when they moved everything out into the streets, she got a kudos to the chef for one of the meals that she was putting out. And you saw her turn back around, turn into camera away from the person talking and smiles. So there it is again, why they're doing that. The thing that they enjoy, the thing that they get out of that, and that's people enjoying their food at the end of the day, enjoying something they made with their hands. And those experiences are also kind of paralleled in what Marcus is going through because he's learning on the job. You know, he talked about his first job was McDonald's where there's zero creativity and all that kind of stuff. So like he's entering their world. He's intrigued by it and he's trying to step into it. But then he has this like massive setback and he's just like his first instinct is to be like, I messed up and like get beaten up by that. Carmi had to come in and give him a check and be like, hey, man, that's going to happen. It's just it's just life. And he tells him that story about the fire. and He's like, hey, I could easily it could all burn away. I could just not put this fire out. My problems, my hang ups, my anxieties will burn away alongside it. But that's not why we're here. We're here to make food. We're here for people to enjoy it. We're here because we love it at the end of the day, the things that all of our hard work produce. And I, I just liked all of that. And then at the back of this episode, once we get over this hump, you know, Marcus is right back at the grind. I, I, I love it. You know, him showing them new things about how to cook everything and again. Like, I just like, I like, there's such like this weird science when it comes to food where it's almost like, no, it's not even almost like, it is basically chemistry. There's these, Thousands upon thousands of ingredients that, in cooked in different ways, specific ways, all result in a different kind of flavor, texture, and all kinds of different stuff. I don't know how anybody figured this shit out. Just this much of this, exactly that much of this, and then we gotta let it sit for this amount of time. Blah, 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 splash, 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 bloop, 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 oh, we're, and pff, done. It always blows my mind. Like, it's, honestly, you can make that same approach to not just cooking, but like literally everything about our human existence. 
who thought about mixing all these different things together, who thought about, you know, whatever. You can apply that same concept to literally every aspect of our civilization and our evolution over the years and be like, it's just mind blowing. The trial and error that had to occur over all these years to get us to where we are right now, to where it's just second nature to just slap a couple of you know, our, our favorite ingredients together and be like, oh, well, somebody had to find out if that was safe. And who knows how many people died trying some other combination that wasn't safe, you know, <laughs> like it's, it's wild. I'm, I'm fascinated by that, especially when it comes to like the food element, like the cooking element of these endless, endless combinations. Obviously, there's whole thing with like Mike and, you know, the loan sharking and the, you know, desperation, the darkness that led to what led to what happened. And to bring Carmi back here, his passing, just the links that he was going through to keep this place afloat, having a little side hustle during the pandemic just to get them by all the ins and outs he pr he had no idea about. And now he's taken them on himself and has also had to resort to much the same thing because even though they got a hookup through Fect to get the parts they needed, the actual process and purchasing those parts to get them installed and have them is uh, a little pricey. So he had to have Ricky actually go out and do what he had been doing up until this point. Anyway, guys, what'd you think? I'd love to hear from you all. Sound off the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. We'll carry in the conversation after the video. Hope you enjoyed the reaction. If it did, leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe if you're not already. Remember, if you want to see the full length reaction, as always, you can check it out over on Patreon or for Gummy Rebel's channel, get you access as well. And speaking of before you go, I want to shout out our channel legends. Manny Sherrett, Your Course Gone, Melito, Robert Anguiano, Jeffrey Hale, Jake Contrell, Eric Official, Casey Wood, and Russell Crockett. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. That's it for this video, guys. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, everybody.